freaking first cut. Golly! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the First Cut Podcast presented by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. This is your RBC Heritage preview, storylines, best bets, the vaunted one and done. I am in the pilot seat, your host, Patrick McDonald, and I am joined co-pilot today, Greg Ducharme, the real GFD. What's going on? We're ready for launch, pilot. Uh, I'm looking looking forward to it. This is going to be a, a fun show. We keep on rolling um, right into a, as we said on Sunday, a Siggy. We we got a we got a big one this week, and just about everybody's here. Scotty's still in the field. This is um, it's going to be a fun tournament. Yeah, Scotty flying back home to Texas, going to the bar in the green jacket, coming back to Hilton Head. How uh maybe maybe a little hangover there Monday for him. How how's your major hangover doing? How's the it, energy level? Uh, energy levels pretty normal. I'm exhausted, but that's um just about an everyday occurrence. Something we deal with on a daily basis. So we're fine. I'm like I said, I'm I'm fired up. I, I know that it's there. Definitely feels like a little drop in the energy, right? But by the time we roll around to Sunday. You know what we'll be saying, Patrick. What a week. Yeah, that, that's true. And, I mean, the parents aren't home. It's just the yeah. kids are out to play. We're going to have, have a few friends over. Risky. Maybe open, open the pool. I know it's middle of April, but <laughs> temperature is probably not too cold. Uh, pretty quiet Tuesday, though, for us, Greg. Uh, I, I guess first, any final Masters thoughts before we transition into this new week? I, I'm just still blown away by the performance of Scotty Scheffler on so many different levels. He is um he is just so much better than everybody else and it's uh, it's appalling to watch and it doesn't matter if it's tough conditions. It doesn't matter if it's gettable conditions. It doesn't matter if it's a short course or a long course or Augusta National or somewhere else. Scotty knows how to get it done and he's a big time problem for everybody else. And I haven't in a long time, I haven't since Tiger felt looking at other players like, yeah, but they can't beat Scotty. You know, even when John Rahm was playing well, when Dustin Johnson was playing well, when Rory was at his best, it, it never had this feeling of, but they can't beat Scotty. So it's a, it's still um, right on the front and center of my mind and probably will be for the rest of the year. Yeah, especially after he wins this week as well with uh, everything going on. We will get to that. Um, I guess the only news from today, Greg, we have I, I want to credit everyone uh, on this report. We have the City AM, a London based paper written by I have the byline here, Frank Dallaris and Matt Hardy. For those listening, Frank Dallaris and Matt Hardy, they reported two separate sources have told City AM that they believe a deal is close to done when it comes to Rory McIlroy joining Live Golf. It is claimed that the Live Golf Chiefs have offered world number two McIlroy an eye-watering $850 million plus 2% in equity in the competition. It would make him Live Golf's biggest signing so far, and it could be announced after the Masters, they said, here's the kicker, Greg. Greg, here's my favorite line of the entire article. Immediately after that, it is, it has not been possible to verify the claims. All right. It goes wild on the internet. People are taking <laughs> it as gospel. They're they're spreading the good news. They're, they're, they're doing the whole damn thing. Rory McIlroy today on the range at Harbor Town talking to Todd Lewis of Golf Channel pretty much just started laughing uh, about it said you know i'm not going i'm going to play on the pga tour for the rest of my career uh you know obviously we've seen some players say some things and go back on their word uh greg do you see a world where rory mcroy is uh running the majestics or running the cliques or going up against my ripper gc or you think you think you can uh, take him for his word um, well, I think you could take him for his word. It, the strange answer is as much as I 
hate to say it. The strange answer is both. And I think both can be true. Um, Rory mentioned before in a press conference that, you know, there's a world where everybody plays there, but, but it's not separate, right? They can't be separate entities. So if they, if a deal comes together, yeah, I could see Rory being a part of team golf. Absolutely. Because he'll get on board with whatever the PGA tour is doing. Mm Mm-hmm. But at the same time, no, Rory is not going to leave the PGA Tour. And um, you know what's the alarming thing about this? And we've talked about this before. The alarming thing is that there's just somebody. Somebody is blatantly lying. Right? I, I don't know exactly who it is. In one case, it could be Rory McIlroy. Right? We've seen mm-hmm. other players do that. It, Rory could be just lying. Um, I don't think that's the case. Um, now, I first saw this article from a, an account of a nameless, faceless Twitter account, which gets me all worked up at first. Then I realized they shared an article. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, well, they're just sharing an article. This nameless account didn't do anything wrong here. I'm I'm fine with this. The article now has unnamed sources. <laughs> There's no verification. So now it's like, okay, this is an e- this may be an even bigger problem because we got a legitimate, I think, a legitimate media news source publishing hearsay. I, I heard on I heard on the range that uh, you know the sky was going to turn red. No, that, that's like a it's a very dangerous place for journalism. I mean, you're a writer, you, you don't. Unless it's an editorial piece and you're sharing your opinion, what you think might happen. In that case, it should be known that it's an editorial piece. But when when articles or when things are presented as fact that are not fact, not verified, um, that that becomes a big problem. And and you get into this rumor frenzy again, which just it, it's so sad to see. It is. It's the state of the game, unfortunately. And uh, as I said, City AM, Frank Daller, as he is their sports editor, and Matt Hardy as well, deputy sports editor. With the byline, yeah, the real kicker for me, Greg, in this article was it has not been possible to verify the claim. Yeah, it's a just kicker. Buried in there. And, and the thing, this is the other thing, Patrick. It's not just the game of golf. Like mm-hmm. all, all of a sudden, in the last two months, my Twitter feed has gone to like pure conspiracy theories on all these like big worldly issues. And you run into the same problem, it, whether it's, I'm not even going to name one, but no matter what this issue is, there's somebody tweeting about it. There may be an article written and, and it's one thing to say, okay, that's a person sending out a tweet. I, I, I shouldn't take that at its word. There's another thing when there's 50 people tweeting about it, the same thing, or 100, whoever, you know, when it fills up your feed. And it's an even worse thing when there's an actual article written about it in a, you know, a real media source. It's a, it's a real issue um, in our world. And it drives me crazy because there's nowhere now. I, all right. I, I, well, I read this article, but that might not be true. I heard from this guy at the grocery market and uh, that might not be, you, you don't know what is true. There's no way to know. So it's yeah. concerning. The guy at the grocery market might be more viable than, uh, than some sources these days, Greg. Yeah. You know, the, the guy, the guy looking to pick up, uh, you know, just some produce, you guys get talking and he's like, you know what? I heard Rory's going to live for 850 million. Yeah. All yeah, right. And then and then I tell the next guy in line who's just trying to get a quarter pound of cheese, American, thinly sliced, Naturally. that uh, that Rory is, in fact, going to live and it's done. And now we got a real issue. So, um, but yeah, uh, Rory's not leaving the PGA Tour. Are you do you go to the counter for cheese? Uh, I actually don't go to the grocery store at all. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Source so it's right. a it's a kind of an odd <laughs> analogy for me to make, but what I imagine the grocery place. store would, would be <laughs> yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
everyone's talking about Rory and Liv. Uh, I, can, I can't. I can't confirm. I can't confirm. All right, we will get into some real news uh, coming up with the RBC Heritage Preview Best Bets and One and Done. But first, let's hear a word from our partners. The UEFA Europa League quarterfinals on CBS Sports Network and streaming live on Paramount+. Plus. And we are back. Greg, 69 of the best players on the PGA Tour. Teeing it up this week at Harbortown Golf Links there, Hilton Head Island on the Calabogie Sound. Is that correct? That is correct. Nice. Okay, not too shabby. Uh, you know... Signature event, obviously, no cut, unlike the Genesis in the API. Greg, I guess my initial question for you is this cadence in the schedule. We're going to be seeing a lot of it coming up. The Wells Fargo Championships the week before the PGA. Uh, the U.S. Open's a very busy stretch with the Memorial, U.S. Open, and then the Travelers as well. Uh, and, and this is really our first taste of it. What uh, What are your thoughts on kind of having a big boy event so close to majors um it's not my preference um yeah this is a difficult situation to be in so again it's not my preference because so much energy goes into the masters right and these guys that are contending give if you look at this from thirty thousand feet in an ideal world your best players play their best at majors and then all of a sudden, the very next week, they're going to be playing in a signature event. That's not ideal. Um, but at the same time, the signature events are very costly for the PGA Tour sponsors. And so when you have a sponsor that's willing to put up the, the dollar amount to have a signature event, and oh, by the way, they sponsor multiple events on your tour, you have to support them. Um, and and it, it's, again, not ideal, but this is the situation that we're in. It's not... You know, everybody isn't able, willing or able to to make their event a signature event. So it's it's a tough place to be in. But in an ideal world, no. I mean, it's it's like Scotty Scheffler wins the Super Bowl. And then the very next week goes and plays the, you know, the Bills uh, on the road. Imagine right. that. I guess the Panthers is probably a better uh, example, but you just got another, you got another game the next week. Yeah. It's kind of wild. It, it is. Uh, and a lot of them are making the trip 26 out of the top 30 in the world. Obviously no Rom or Sir Tyrell house Hatton, uh, but no Victor. And I believe no Hideki. Those are the two. That, PGA yeah, that's, tour right. Guys. that's right. Not in the field, but everyone else. And, uh, a, num a number of them coming off that missed cut at the Masters. You think Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, who's in the field because he's ranked 30th in the world. Uh, Wyndham Clark, Brian Harmon. Uh, of those guys, who uh, who draws your interest the most, you think? Well, I'm fascinated with Spieth and, uh, and Thomas. Not because I think they're going to play well, but I, I'm just very curious to see what's going on with them. Like, what what's wrong? Um, it, and it's not for Justin Thomas specifically. It's two 79s in his last four rounds 79s you know this is this is not acceptable for justin thomas being 30th in the world is not acceptable for him and i know that he feels the same way right so i, I want to see if he can get back on the horse rally something was that a fluke where it just got really difficult and you made a couple mistakes and things got away from him or is there a real problem going on? Jordan Spieth, I'm curious, is this is his wrist an issue? Is his wrist creating uh, all, all the problems because it flares up occasionally? Is there a real problem with his short game? Or again, was Augusta National just a abnormally difficult test? So these are these are the biggest questions for me because I think those two guys are really important for our sport. And when they're struggling and so many of the top players are struggling, it's, uh, it's alarming. It is. And Jordan Spieth is off in round number one with his fellow Texas Longhorn world. Number one, Scotty Scheffler, Greg, is he going to do it again? You think no, no matter, I mean, he, he flew back home, got a, got a few beers with the buddies in the green jacket, 
visited Meredith, checked in, made sure she was all right. Back on the jet to Hilton Head Island. Uh, is he going to win again? Is he going to do it? Yeah, I kind of think so. <laughs> you know, I do. I mean, I know we're going to do some, uh, some, some bets and some official picks later, but his game suits this golf course perfectly. He's long, but he's very straight. Um, which is a is a huge advantage, especially here. So he'll know how to position the ball. He's played here before. He came in tied 11th. I think he's going to come in this week with a better game plan. Uh, they'll be ready. And if there's anybody... that got, One of the big concerns for me, this is a concern with a, a Max Homa, a, a Ludwig Oberg, um, you know, these guys that were in the mix, in Colin Morikawa, they're in contention last week. Now there's this drop off. It's a big emotional toll, but it it doesn't seem like last week was that heavy of a lift for Scotty Scheffler. You know, it's like I don't, it, it felt like everybody else was swimming upstream, and Scotty was cruising downstream in a canoe. He wasn't even rowing. It, so, yeah, I think he can handle it. I think he can reset. I, I don't really think there's anybody else that could win the masters and come back the very next week. And I would feel as confident as I do about their game. Greg, what, uh, what would you grade Scotty Scheffler's game at the masters? Do you think he had his a plus game? No. A minus. No, probably, uh, probably. Well, there's a couple stages. So first three rounds uh, until the, Ninth hole on Sunday, I would give him a B plus. I okay. think from I think the the last ten holes, you could say I know he birdied eight too. So maybe the last eleven holes, I think he had his A game. I do. I I think that was the best of Scotty Scheffler. Mm-hmm. Um, before that, no, it was it was not his his best stuff. His iron play was a uh, a lot weaker than it typically is. Um, but still, it, it's like you know he's going to get up and down. You you know that he's going to hit his pitch shots close, and he does. I mean, it's some mistakes, right? He missed a he he missed a couple of putts that were short. Like a, he missed a putt on five that was a basic tap in. Um, he hit it into into uh, the tributary to Ray's Creek twice. One of them he got lucky on. And it stayed up somehow, uh, but but those are uncharacteristic mistakes for Scotty Scheffler, and he won by f- four. <laughs> he he got up and down on the last hole just for fun, pretty much, just to show everyone I'm that much better than you. Yeah, well, he didn't want a four putt again. Yeah, he's like, I don't need to do this, even though he could have. I'm going to anyways. <laughs> right. Uh, some numbers attached to that, Greg, if you're interested. Over the last three months. I know over the last couple of years, there are some dumb numbers too, but last three months, he's one stroke better than Xander Shoffley per round, who is the second best statistical person. And he is two, yeah, he's doubled up Tommy Fleetwood in terms of total strokes gained per round, and Tommy Fleetwood's ranked 10th in the world. So he is two times better per round than so, the 10th best player. And, and per... <laughs> Per round. That's that's how you right. win by four. That's how yeah. you win the Masters by four yeah. over. Yeah. So the second best player, you're, you're four shots better than for a week. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, again, it's like he doesn't really need his best stuff. Um, it, it's great if he has it. He can afford some mistakes. He knows what to do. And, and it doesn't feel heavy for him. It's not like this huge... I'm sure it's more emotional than he leads on, leads on, but but it's not this overwhelming task. It's what should happen. So rolling on to the next week, maybe he's a little more tired than usual, but he's got a little cushion. <laughs> Scary. It, it it is. Yeah. No. It, I mean, I think the Houston Open, or yeah, the Houston Open's a, a great uh kind of representation of this. I think he had, had his like C game. That week to tell you yeah, 
And and if you this is the scary thing about this week, right? You start pulling up. I, I'm not huge into this, but it is very interesting. And I found it to be a pretty effective with some picks this year. These proximity buckets where you start looking at where guys excel in approach play. Mm-hmm. And Bay Hill, the Masters, Houston, they all had an um, a significant amount of shots that came from outside of 200 yards. Uh, and that's not really Scotty's strength. He's pr- 200 to 225, he's 13th. But outside of 200 overall, he's 63rd. But you start getting into this week where a lot of shots come from inside of 175. Well, 175 to 200, he's 38. I didn't mean to read that. 150 to 175, <laughs> he's first. 100 to 125, he's 41st. 50 to 125, so a big range of wedge shots, he's first. 100 to 125, he's first. 75 to 100, he's 14th. Inside 100 yards, he's third. Like th- these short irons and wedges are where he really excels, mm-hmm. you know, even within his own game. And that's what he's going to have all week long. All week long. I'm sure he will make it onto one of, if not both, of our betting cards. Uh, we will get to the RBC Heritage best bets here in a moment but first a break uh from our sponsor we need your sports news anywhere we've got breaking news to bring you then get your sports anytime you want the big trade news overnight to discuss because we know you need sports all the time a lot of movement in the rankings this week a legend adds to their legacy we're bringing you that breaking news right here on hq cbs sports hq anywhere anytime all the time and we are back for those of you new here, producer Josh is kind enough to give us $50 on a matchup, 30 for a finishing position, $10 on an outright, and another 10 for outright number two. This best bet segment is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more, Greg. Make it more. Okay. Can you do that for me? Can you make well, every gonna, moment more? We're going to try. Okay. We're going to try to do it. Josh, let's, uh, let's pull it up. It feels weird, just the two of us. I'll yeah, tell you. <laughs> small, uh, small chart. But when you're the only two winning bets on this program, you know <laughs> what? you get you get the Tuesday show to yourself. That's right, <laughs> Greg. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you kick it off with your matchup. All right, I got uh, Shane Lowry over Sahi Thagala, um, minus one fifty. So this is a significant advantage. Now Sahi played really well here last year. Um. But I just love where Shane Lowry is heading into this week. And you're going to see him a couple times on my card. Um, so Shane Lowry, in his last four measured events, has gained four or more strokes approaching the green in each of them. He is hitting the ball like a maniac. Here's the other thing. Driving accuracy, very important on this golf course. Tree-lined, it's tight, it's narrow. He leads the PGA Tour in driving accuracy. Um, So that caught my attention. Struggling on the greens a little bit, but he happens to putt pretty well here. Um, And that's why he has two top three, two T3s here and uh, an additional T9. So I love Shane Lowry and I like him over Sahi Thigala. That T3, the most recent one, he should have won that golf tournament, I believe. Uh, I think he like chipped into the water on a par three late. In 2022. Yeah, that was the year. Yeah. That was Spieth. Um, over, over Cantlay. That was Spieth. Yeah. 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 Lowry was right there. Yeah. He had so so many good looks. Just could yeah. not, not really connect. Uh, I'm going, Josh, not to put you on the spot here, but I, I made a 11th hour switch. Adam Shank minus 110 over Eric Cole. No offense to the Russ bus. And Canadian Corey Connors, I will, uh, I'll leave them on the sidelines for now. But I'm going Adam Shank minus one ten over Eric Cole. Shank's been really good. He had yeah, he uh, top five nice. there in Texas. Yeah, the Masters. He's coming back next year. Got that top twelve finish. Thank you very much. Top twenty at the Players Championship as well. And Eric Cole, not great recently. Just doesn't really have a lot going for him. So I'm going to take the hot hand with Adam Shank at minus 110. Speaking of hot hands, 
I'm going to ride Denny McCarthy for a top 20 at plus 150. Runner up to Akshay at the Texas Open. Made the cut in his Masters debut. I think we can both agree. Augusta National and Denny probably are not the best fit. But no, he's still Town, 70 on Sunday. Yeah, no, he, he impressed. He kind of, he, he surprises, like even at Jack's place, right? He easily could have won that golf tournament. It's, yeah. uh, it's very he's got impressive. Dog in him. Yeah, for sure. For, even for a guy who went to the University of Virginia, he's got a little yeah. bit of a, a little bit of a dog on him. Yeah. Um. So, so top 20 for him. I like the course fit much better at Harbor Town. He's played well here in the past, accurate off the tee, great wedge player, great putter. I like that recipe for a top 20. Greg, you're kind of going with a, uh, you know, somewhat similar type of player. Yeah. Law, like way down the board. So I'm going Mackenzie Hughes for a top 30. I mean, that's nearly just the top half of the field. There's only 69 players. So when you're looking at top 30s, you're not going to find very many um, in the plus money here. But Mackenzie Hughes at plus 130, I think is a really valuable play. He's been hitting the ball well. Um, he played really well at the Valspar. His his last four finishes are all top 30s. And there's a T3 and a T14 in his last two. So I think his form is really good. I think Mackenzie Hughes is playing really good golf. Now, his record here is very poor. Very poor. Um, he's got three missed cuts. His best finish is a T52. Surprising to me. I was shocked when I saw that. That's why I think his number's so long. But he in in the, these events, every time he's played here at Harbor Town, he's really struggled with his iron play. And I think his iron play is just a whole lot better. So I'm curious to see if Mackenzie Hughes can rewrite the script, get back in the mix, and he's only got to he's only got to be you know a little more than half the field. I think he can do it. Okay. Speaking of getting back in the mix. Greg, how about you tell the listeners your outright selections? Scotty Scheffler <laughs> uh, is first because I like, well, I like two things about this. One, I like having a dog in the fight on Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know you're going to have that with Scheffler. So it's been fun. I've been putting him on my betting card every week, yeah. and he keeps on winning. <laughs> So he's got to go on there. I, I almost, I don't care about the number. The second one I did, it's the first time, and it's a mistake that it's the first time I've done this. This is a winner without. So I've gone with winner without Ludwig, Rory, Scotty, and Xander. I was originally looking for just a winner without Scotty, but I figured, hey, spread. I like Xander a lot this week too. So, Maybe let's spread all these guys out, get rid of all these guys, and leave ourselves with Shane Lowry at 28 to 1. Wow. That is, you have a potential for a sweep, the, per the perfect board. Yeah. It's never been accomplished before and in first no. cut history. Because we've, we've always looked at it as being impossible. It's, I mean, there come times, I think, when, uh, you know, Kyle hit Joaquin Neiman on live. Yeah. That, that type of scenario. But, in the same tournament, Greg, would be unprecedented. They might write stories about you, write yeah. songs. The only other option is you get outright to get 10 on each. And I was thinking about this last week when I saw the results. I should have just done Scotty in both. <laughs> just put 20 on Scotty. Yeah. You know, I almost did that, but I figured this would be a little more fun. Damn, I am kind of jealous of... The without market because I went Shane Lowry to win at 40 to one. That includes the supercomputer that is Ludwig Oberg, Rory Scotty, and Xander, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, for, all, for all the reasons Greg said, I think, uh, you know, great course history, sitting the cover off his irons, accurate off the tee, everything you want at Harbor Town. And it's not a tournament if I'm not betting on my main man, Russell Henley. 35 to one to take home the title <laughs> top 10 player in the world <laughs> top 10 player in the world obviously uh you know he's made for these these events accurate off the tee great iron player and a great putter this year which yeah you'd love to see he's kind of rediscovered that after you know the middle of his career being really yeah. really bad on the greens 
that iron play has kind of taken a little bit of yeah. a dip this year. Yeah, it has. Um, but he had a, the Valero Texas Open. He looked like old Ross Bus, mm-hmm. like top ten player in the world caliber Ross Bus. Yeah. yeah, those those types of performances are dangerous, Greg, because they draw me back in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After he disappoints <laughs> me at the players, misses the cut, I put my neck on the line for him. It makes me look like a fool, and then. Yeah. Texas Open happens. Well, I like it. You don't want. How often does it happen where your guy wins two weeks after you vouched for him? Exactly. Right. You, I I saw this coming, but when it was time, I wasn't there. You know, and put my money where my mouth is. So it's a sign that you really believe. Like we need another one. Yeah, got to keep on riding the bus. Uh, all right. So to recap matchups, I'm going Adam Shank minus one ten over Eric Cole. Greg is going Sugar Shane Lowry minus 150 over Sahith Digala. I got a top 20 on Denny Boy McCarthy at plus 150. Greg is going with Mackenzie Hughes, top 30 in the 69 man field at plus 130. Russ Bus Henley, 35 to 1, and Shane Lowry, 40 to 1 for me. Greg's going with the guy who's going to win the tournament, most likely, Scotty Scheffler at 4 to 1. And winner without. Ludwig, Rory, Scotty Scheffler, and Xander. Shane Lowry at 28 to 1. The sweep could happen, ladies and gentlemen. A true where were you moment. <laughs> bookmark this episode. Bookmark this timestamp. This will go down in the history books. But that's uh-huh. not all. That's not all, Greg. Because producer Josh gives us 50 more dollars. In this economy, he's given us 50 more dollars for a best bet and there they are look at us only two oh, yeah. guys only two guys in the black oh let's, yeah let's, look uh, at i mean just look at this this profit gain it's let's fill it up yeah it, it might be time to uh i know tax season has come and gone you typically dump your losers before tax seasons for uh for some write-offs <laughs> unfortunately we cannot dump rick kyle and mark who are all in the red Meanwhile, Greg up 58.3% on the year. How you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With no outrights in there. I've just been plodding along. And my strategy has been top 40s, top 30s, top 40s. I'm sticking with that. This week, it's a top 40. Remember, 69 player field. And I'm going with Nick Dunlap. All right, now let me explain. Nick Dunlap won the American Express, right? A huge win, unbelievable win. He gets his PGA Tour card. Afterwards, he doesn't do anything. It's a real struggle for him. But the last two weeks have really been a significant change. He came in tied 11th in Houston, and he hit it really well, especially with his irons. And he hit it really well last week at the Masters. And he, he gained over three and a half strokes approaching the green. In two rounds, in those conditions at the Masters. I think Nick Dunlap's starting to get comfortable out on the PGA Tour. I think this could be a nice golf course for him. And he's only got to only got to beat 29 guys. I think he can do that. Only got to beat 29 guys. You got some in the field like uh, you know Kevin Kisner's got the sponsor's exemption. Webb Simpson, some guys a little out of form. So uh, I like it. I like that you could find a plus plus money top forty in this field, yeah. Greg. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to work him in more so than get a plus money top forty because I like Nick Dunlap, and then it gave me the idea. Oh, maybe I could get a plus money top forty. And that's why you're, that's why you're a cash cow, man. That's why you are the cash cow. Let's speaking of cow again. Speaking of cash cows. I feel like I have to kind of donate to the fund here since <laughs> to uh, make up for my prior tra- transgressions last week, picking Jordan Spieth to win in the best bet segment. <laughs> so we're going back to the well, not with Spieth. Thank God. Scotty Scheffler to win the RBC Heritage at four to one. I All right. I got I got last <laughs> week. I got a question for you. Yeah. At what point last week in your private moments? Did you think, what have I done? Um, So I will say when we were filling out the rundown, for those of you who don't know, we have a rundown. We put all of our bets in. 
uh, and then we kind of go about our days. I'm usually one of the first ones to put the bets in because right when Josh sends it to me, I just fill it out real quick, get it done, so I don't forget. I had Scotty Scheffler originally in my best bet thing. And then like a couple minutes later, I went back in. And I was like, I'm going to be a legend for this. Jordan Spieth, 25 to 1. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, I knew I had made a mistake when on coverage, it was like it was poetry. They panned to Scotty Scheffler chipping in from the bunker on 12 for birdie. And that was right around when Jordan Spieth was starting his round and he stubs his chip on one and makes double. I'm like, ah. I, deserve, I was like, I deserve this. I 100% deserve this. So it was uh, Jordan's first hole. <laughs> yeah, correct. On his first hole, I was like, all right, that was a fun, uh, like 10 minutes, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. And it just didn't feel anything like uh, John Rahm, who made double on his first hole last year and oh. won. No, not well, nothing. You like probably that. didn't even think about that. I now it, it uh the announce. I think Van Pelt was like, you know, John Rom did this last year. I'm like, not not like this. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, well I I feel for you. I'm glad you're back on the horse. Yeah, back on the horse. Un- unfortunately, you know the the baby is in the back of uh in my mind. If he has to withdraw mid tournament. Uh, I feel like this one will be a donation just to be back in the good graces of the gambling gods. And then me and Scotty can start moving forward again. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. So we got for the Moneyball best bets. I'm on Scotty Scheffler to win at four to one. And Greg, the plus money top 40, Nick Dunlap plus 120 from your two cash cows, KP, Greg, and Mark. Figure it out, please. This best bet segment was brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Greg, make every moment more. Let's do it. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, just to let you know how much we're carrying the team. Everybody else is losing, but as a team, we're actually turning a profit this year. We are four four point two percent, which uh, you know in this environment. Some uh, shaky markets. Jerome Powell, he's he's flip flopping on the rate cuts and everything. Inflation, inflationary environment, but it doesn't matter for us. Yeah, we're doing we're we're doing fine. Thanks to you and me. Winners win, losers lose. Uh, and speaking of losers, unfortunately, I kind of am one in the one and done. Josh, if you can, uh, if you can bring those up because we've got a uh, we've got some crossover we've added the run your pool rankings to the left of or to the right of our names top five in the first cut one and done on run your pool at fifth banana pancakes at 9.4 and with an e in fourth at 9.7 ba314 maybe that's a reference to pie the number not the food ah. 10.3 mike m how original at 10.3 as well and in first he's kind of been he's kind of been the guy all year greg yeah or, or gal named. or gal for all we know right we, yeah we don't know. i mean i would think i would think guy i would too based on the name it not is, the performance the name it is the big boy team at 10.5 he's got about a 200k lead yeah. over mike m killing we got it. killing it we got what like nine 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 hundred twenty ish people i believe are in this pool. uh yeah just yeah. uh just for some context when i read out some of these names and remember 20 million on the line 3.6 to first place rick with 2.2 million in 580 second place he's going with wyndham clark I'm kind of yeah. surprised by this, Greg. Um, you know, we talked about him yesterday on the DFS pod, okay. and I kind of like him in DFS, and because he's, but but it's because of the price. Like he's priced too low. He's at ninety two hundred. Mm-hmm. He's he's way too low, and I think he could do well. But that's a risk. Rick is chasing. <laughs> that's what this is. Rick, he has been very vocal about yeah. how how upset he is been about this season so far 
Yeah. So he's uh, this is what what it feels like to be four back of Scotty Scheffler going into the final round. You're just yeah. chasing. Just throwing stuff against the wall and hoping it sticks. Yeah. KP, meanwhile, 486th place in the run your pool at 2.9, almost at three. Congratulations to that. Going with Tommy Ladd Fleetwood. I like that uh, play. I do too. I uh, I am surprised he did not get more love, but unfortunately for us, we're not going to be able to get first place because we went with another European, another member of that Ryder Cup team. If you listen to the best bet segment, you probably know who it is. I'm at 332nd at 5.1. Greg's at 124 at 7. Only 11 spots behind Josh, who's in first for us at 113 at about 7.1. All three of us are going with Sugar Shane Lowry. Greg, yeah. what, uh, how do you feel about us being tripled up on him? Uh, a lot worse than I felt when I typed his name in. <laughs> Uh, look, the, there's a worry with him. The worry is the putter. Mm -hmm. I think he can find something, and that's what I'm leaning on. So, yeah, I I, um, I feel pretty good about it. I think we all move up. I wish I had a little different play than Josh, but what can you do? Josh said it took all his powers not to go with Jordan Spieth. Trust me, Josh. Yeah. Been there, done that. It's not as fun as it looks, unfortunately. Um, um, but we have to get with Mark, of course. He, he's in the middle. He's sandwiched in the middle of everyone. He's at 6.3, 219th on the big board. He's going with Patrick Cantley, the guy who's kind of been hovering around this tournament for the last handful of years, easily could have won in 2022. Uh, kind of showed a little bit of form there at the Masters. He he was hovering, yeah. I would say, hovering quite uh, quite yeah. intensely. He hit it a lot better. So I, I think, and with his record here, I mean, he's got like five top threes. It's a pretty crazy record. And he's played six times, five top tens and four top threes and one miscut. There will not be another miscut at the end of this week. I like the play. I almost went with Patrick Cantlay myself, but I feel like it's, I think he's still going to get it going a little more later in the year. I kind of have memorial in uh, in mind for Cantlay. But, okay, all right. So I just figured there was something in the future, maybe the playoffs. Yeah, that that's what I uh, you know I thought about Xander Shoffley this week, but I thought about East Lake. I thought about the playoffs. I thought about another major championship. Uh, yeah, which are all similar money types, but with larger fields. So. The range of outcomes is much more uh, dispersed, but that's why I went with Shane Lauer. Yeah, I, I like it. I think it's the right play, even yeah. though you guys did too. Yeah, so I will not be in first place after this, unfortunately. Neither will you. Josh will, uh, unless Patrick Cantlay wins, will probably still be in first amongst us. He will hope to catch the big boy team, though, in first. Shout out to him once again. Greg, I believe... That is all we have on the docket, unless you wanna you wanna talk about Paul Meadow bugs again. I know no. we're talking. <laughs> I feel for you with the Paul Meadow bug. Yeah. Okay. No Paul Meadow bugs. Get some sleep tonight. <laughs> I do too. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll just leave it at that. I don't think the listeners need to hear about me uh, waking up to a Paul Meadow bug in my bed, but. Uh, <laughs> It's like, it's just disgusting. There aren't a lot. I, I'm a pretty easy go guy. I don't, I'm not like a squeamish guy. I, mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, I don't have these fear, a lot of these fears, but palmetto bugs are downright terrifying. Yeah. I can't stand. I had, I was telling you before the show, I had a little run in with them for a period of time when I lived in Florida and it, it changed me as an individual. Hardened you. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like their exterior shell. Made you a man. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. For for those of you who don't know, which is everyone except Greg and Josh, uh, I got no sleep last night because at 1 30 a.m. I felt something on my arm. And for those of you not in the South, pretty much the 
exact same thing. The what am I looking for here? What's the word? The comp or a cockroach is a palmetto bug here in the south. I felt it on my yeah. arm, shoved it off. Did not. Oh, oh God, no. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I didn't sleep the rest of the night. I looking up places to move now. To tell you the truth, <laughs> yeah, I I don't blame you. All right, that is all we have for you guys. Thank you to producer Josh, who was on the ones and the twos, dialing up the Palmetto Bug pictures when no one asked for them. That is Greg Ducharme. You can find him at the Real GFD. I am Patrick McDonald. You can find me at P McDonald CBS. This was your first cut podcast. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.